In this video, we're going to take a look at the fourth race condition lab on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Single Endpoint Race Conditions. In the last video, we looked at multi endpoint race conditions, so if you missed that one, it might be worth going back to revisit it. If you've already seen that, let's jump into the theory. Sending parallel requests with different values to a single endpoint can sometimes trigger powerful race conditions. Consider a password reset mechanism that stores the user ID and the reset token in the user's session. In this scenario, sending two parallel password reset requests from the same session, but with two different usernames, could potentially cause the following collision. So we have this diagram which is showing two attempted password resets. One is from an attacker and one is from the victim. And you can see that these get mixed up due to this race window. So that essentially we get halfway through setting up the session variables for the attacker and then the victims comes through and all of those session variables are updated with the victim's information. But then once that's done, it continues doing the password reset request for the attacker. So long story short, what happens in the end is that you have a session where some of the values are tied to the attacker and other values are tied to the victim. And in this case, the code is tied to the victim. It's tied to the victim's account, but the token is actually going to be sent back to the hacker's email address. For this attack to work, the different operations performed by each process must occur in just the right order. It would likely require multiple attempts or a bit of luck to achieve the desired outcome. Email address confirmations, or any email-based operations, are generally a good target for single endpoint race conditions. Emails are often sent in a background thread after the server issues the HTTP response to the client, making race conditions more likely. And with the theory stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the practical lab called Single Endpoint Race Conditions. The description says, This lab's email change feature contains a race condition that enables you to associate an arbitrary email address with your account. Someone with the email address carlos at ginandjuice.shop has a pending invite to be administrator for the site, but they've not yet created an account. Therefore, any user who successfully claims this address will automatically inherit admin privileges. To solve the lab, we should identify a race condition that lets us claim an arbitrary email address. We should change our email address to carlos at ginandjuice.shop. We should access the admin panel and then delete the user carlos. As usual, we have some credentials to log in with and we've got our own email server, which we can use to view the emails. So like the previous lab, I kind of solved this one quite quickly without really using the methodology of predicting and probing our endpoints. So this time I'm going to try and follow it as we should do because it's good practice to work out how to find these vulnerabilities. It's quite easy to solve the lab after having read through the lab material, but not necessarily to find these same vulnerabilities using a reliable methodology. So let's go and log in with Wiener and Pizza and we'll also open up this email client. So first of all, let us just try and update our email address. I'll just change this to cat at our exploit server. And it tells us to click on the link. So we're going to have a look at our inbox here. I think I need to refresh this. And we have this link that we can click to confirm. Successfully updated. OK. And then I guess if we refresh the page, it should now be cat, which it is. So let's try this again. And let's do cat1. And then we'll also do cat2. And we'll go and have a look at our email server, refresh the page, and we want to see if we click on the first one, does it succeed? But it doesn't. It says link invalid. So we're basically supposed to infer from this that the website is only storing one pending email address at a time, and that submitting a new email address will edit this entry in the database rather than append in for it. So that's us predicting the potential for a collision. So now we want to benchmark the behavior. We can go to our burp suite and let's grab a copy of the post request to change the email and send it to the repeater. And then we can create a group here. I'm going to go and add it to a group to begin with. We'll call it race and change the color. And I'm going to change the email address here. Let me change this one to test one. And then we'll send this to the repeater again. We'll change that to test two. And then we can just keep doing this. So just control and R will send another one to the repeater. And you want to give it a different email address just so that we're able to track them. And I'm not too sure how many we really need to do here. I'm going to do, let's do 10. And next we want to go and send these in a sequence over separate connections. So that's it. We can select that and then click send. It'll send all 10 of these. 
And then we can wait and have a look at the responses here, or we can just go over to our email server. We go over to our email server and we basically want to see whether we received a single email for each one of those usernames and it looks like we did. There aren't any duplicates and they're all in the correct order. So now on our probe phase, we want to go and try the same thing again, but using the single packet attack. So I'm going to just send these in parallel and then we'll refresh this page. And we just want to see, do these match? And straight away we notice they don't. So we've got two here that are both test nine, and then we've got test 10. So they were in the wrong order, and we've got two duplicates. And then we've got eight, we've got seven, we've got a 10 again, we've got two more sevens, we've got a four or a six. So there's definitely something weird going on here. And this is where we would consider that there might be the race condition when the website is kicking off a task that eventually sends an email to provide an address and then it retrieves data from the database and uses this to render the email template. From that, we deduce that the parallel request changes the pending email address stored in the database during this window, and this results in the confirmation emails being sent to the wrong address. And then we can go and do what I initially did to solve this to begin with. So I actually just used, I believe I just used two requests. So I'm gonna delete a load of these. Get rid of a load of those, and then we're going to set one of them to be the Carlos at gin and juice dot shop. Although I think I need to encode the at symbol, percentage forty. Okay, so I'll URL encode that. So we're sending these in parallel. One is the correct email address, and I'll just put here cats percentage forty. We'll send these in parallel and see what we get back. Both were 302. Let us refresh the page and notice that we have an email confirmation. Confirm your email change to Carlos at Gin and Juice Shop. Click to confirm. So I'll click that to confirm. We'll go back to our account page and notice that our email is now Carlos at Gin and Juice Shop. And that means we have access to the admin panel. And of course, we can delete the user Carlos. And that's how we solved this lab. It was a relatively straightforward one, which is good because next time we'll be looking at the expert lab on partial construction race conditions. And just your usual reminder to go and sign up to the Integrity platform if you want to find some race condition vulnerabilities and get paid for it. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.